as you were talking about calories there, brought out for me an experiment you did where you had four and a half pounds of butter in a week yeah. and actually lost weight. Yeah. So I think talking about this is a good way to illustrate the calorie piece and how it's just a portion of that story when it comes to weight loss, weight gain. Yeah. I mean, I'm an, I hear, it was it was interesting. It was actually part of a cholesterol demonstration experiment that kind of flopped because I went to get the final labs and the lab just didn't draw the right lab. So I didn't have any final data, but the intent was actually to gain weight, but specifically gain weight on a ketogenic diet by overfeeding saturated fat rich source butter. So I ended up eating well over 4,000 calories per day, which is higher than my normal intake, primarily by just slamming lots of butter. I, I ate over four and a half pounds of butter in that week. And I ended up losing weight, um, which I think demonstrates a few things. One, people have different responses to overfeeding. I am not generalizing that as a response. I do not think the average person would lose weight by just adding butter to their diet. But the data show there's huge heterogeneity in terms of how people respond to overfeeding. A large part of it might be that fuel partitioning directs more energy in some people to non-exercise activity thermogenesis. This was even shown variations in fat gain with non-exercise activity thermogenesis, I think in 1999 in Phillips et al. You can look that up. But basically, you know, if I overfeed, what happens? My body temperature goes up. I get really jittery. I bounce around and I just expend that energy for the most part. Maybe I even overcompensate which is why maybe my weight dropped. Let's call it, it was a small drop, so let's even call it no weight gain. But still, there's variations, and I'm at one extreme. Not everybody is at that extreme. But stop and think about that. Think about, like, if we can say that the calories in, calories out model is so profoundly inaccurate, say using like a Harris-Benedict calculator to get your basal metabolic rate, add on an activity factor, that some people could overfeed and not really gain any weight, and other people could overfeed and gain much more weight than predicted, then what is the utility of that tool? The only reason the calories, well, not the only reason, but let's say um, a, a, a post hoc rationalization that exists that maintains calories in the psyche of people is you can always, after the fact, say something like, oh, well, it's still calories in, calories out because, oh, your body compensated and you burned more energy or, oh, you didn't absorb it. Sure, but then you're putting, you know, that downstream. It's not a cause, it's a consequence. So just saying calories doesn't, calories don't cause obesity, which I maintain, calories do not cause obesity, is not saying thermodynamics doesn't apply. It's just placing energy balance at downstream of fuel partitioning and you know how your body's hormones direct the energy you take in, which is why I overfed butter and didn't gain weight. So that was one takeaway from that. There are others as well, like the fact that acute interventions don't necessarily translate to chronic interventions. Um, but yeah, no, I did do that. I ended up replicating it with an even higher feeding paradigm at 6,300-ish calories per day. And um, my estimated weight gain should have been seven pounds over the period I was feeding. I did gain weight, but I only gained 0.7 pounds. So again, prediction of the calories and calories out model wasn't that great. Post hoc, you could say, yeah, Nick, you just put more energy. And I'm like, all right, fine. Give me something useful. And why? Ask why. Like, why is my body burning more energy? And how can we leverage understanding of that physiology in order to actually help people? If you enjoyed that clip, you're gonna to wanna to head over here and catch a full episode. I'll see you over there. Towards the end of college, I started developing a GI upset with basically anything I ate. So I ended up becoming quite desperate and after trying a bunch of medications that uh, didn't end up really working to keep me in remission or help my symptoms, I tried a bunch of different diets because I was desperate.